Okay. So I am using, remember, I'm using two softwares to record the session, right? First is the Zoom, and then I also have a, a screen capture software that I am using separately to record the session and upload to my Google Drive, to, not to my Google Drive, but to my channel on YouTube. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, did you all get my message about the, the lecture? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So let's uh, cover the lecture quickly and then we start doing the lab, okay? So here you go, I prepared a syllabus for the lecture. Now let's see, I prepared a syllabus for the lecture. Let me get the date here. The right date is July 1421. One. It's in my Google Drive and it is and it is in my Google Drive. Let me show you the syllabus of the lecture. We will be using Connect for this course, and I want to make sure you are not having any problems purchasing Connect. Okay, that's the information that I had from the last semester. Oh, thank you. Here you go. I want to make sure that you. Here you go. That's the syllabus of the lecture, right? Lecture Syllabus Physics 12241, Summer 2021. We're going to be using the same book that we use for Physics 120. The class schedule is an asynchronous meeting. And I want to make sure that you are able to purchase Connect for Physics 122. Access to Connect. I have seen several students already log. Uh, you know, here you go. Here's a list of the students that are in Connect right now. Let me see how many we have. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? We're supposed to have eighteen students. Nineteen students, not eighteen, but nineteen students. Oh, actually, it's eighteen. Yeah, we're supposed to have eighteen students. So anybody is having any problems with Connect? Have you be have you been able to to log into Connect into have you been able to purchase? Okay, I got a message from my student today, a mail from a student, but I believe has has been cleared that up, right? Chose Annabella, right? Bella, were you were you able to clear up your problem there, Annabella? Yes, yes I did figure it out. Oh, okay, good. That's great. So I was concerned, you know, that might, might not go smoothly there on the Connect site, but uh, it looks like everything is going well, right? Okay, so... I have a question. question. Uh -huh. um, for the problems, for the homework, is it possible to um, check the answer before submitting it? Well, let me see. I, I have done that before. How is it set up right now? Do you have, you, you mean you want a, a, one attempt? That's what you want? One free attempt? That's what you want? I just, just want to know, know if, if I'm, I'm getting, getting the answers, answers correct. Oh, correct. And you want to know the value of the answer. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if you can fix that now. Uh, I do not know if you'll be able to, to change it, especially if you have already, if you have already started. Let's take a look here at the settings. Let's see here. Homework chapter 13, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Assignment options. Preview. Let's see here. No, it's the policies. I want to go in the policies. Here you go. You have until July 27, 21 to do homework 13 and 14, right? I gave you more time than you need. Let's see. Reference type. Questions points are shown. Question titles are not shown. References are shown. 
access to external link is allowed, formulas are shown, access to ebook and resources is allowed, 0% data from all question scores, okay, access to hints is allowed, okay, I can give you access to hints, and I'm not deducting anything for you to access hints, access to check my work is allowed, okay. Mine doesn't work, when, work. when, when I, I put check, check my, my work, work it uh -huh. The, the button, button is, is just, just not, not it's, uh, it's, it's there, I see it, it but it doesn't, doesn't <laughs> work for me. Yeah. Well, this, I guess the best in, in this case, you know, call connect and ask them what's going on, okay? Because it looks like I did everything the way you asked me to do. Okay. Okay, call connect and see what's going on. They might, they might, they might show solutions and answers. See that? Show solutions and answers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Guided solution allowed, access to us, the instruction is not allowed. I, I can change that. I can change. Uh, Practice questions are allowed. After first attempt, show detailed feedback. After additional attempt, show detailed feedback. After scoring, uh, detailed feedback, feedback shown. Uh, okay, what else? Yeah, tolerances, accented, corrected, correct, required, correct letter cases required. Well, that's, we don't have accented characters there, so you don't have to worry. Unlimited attempt is allowed. I gotta change that, okay? <laughs> I gotta change that, otherwise everybody's gonna get 100%. On each new attempt, students start over. Okay, that makes things difficult for you, huh? I, gotta, I might need to change that as well. Let me put that on my notes. Homework. Attempts, unlimited attempts, allowed. Uh, on each, this the second one is not is not is not convenient because every time that you start a new attempt, you have to do everything all over again. You know, on each attempt, start over. There is no score deduction for taking new attempts. Yeah, see that. I might want to to to, de, to deduct points for each new attempt, otherwise everybody's gonna get 100%. Steady attempts. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna look into that. Printing. Uh, it says zero uses allowed for question. Huh? That's odd. Yeah, I do not know. See, I for some reason whatever policies I set up here is. Uh, is, is not reflecting back there on whatever you're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so ask, ask a connect and keep me posted what's going on, why my policies are not being forced in your attempts. Okay, and then we'll, maybe, maybe it's a problem on their side. Maybe it's a problem on their side, okay? Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, connect, I have been working with Connect already for two years and I have seen mistakes. Two years, one, one, one minute, I started using Connect on the fall. Yeah, I have been using Connect for one year and I have seen mistakes here and there, problems here and there, not only in, in the setup of their site, but also in the questions. Some questions are incorrect, are not properly formulated and so on, okay? So they didn't quite nail it yet, but keep me posted. You know, check that with Connect and keep me posted and if there's anything I can do to help you, I will, I'll do that. And, okay, so let's see here. Okay, he goes, so there's no problem here, right? Most everyone, here's the link. I haven't linked that to Blackboard yet. I haven't linked that to Blackboard yet, but once I get the chance, I'll do that. But so far you can just, uh, access directly through Connect, going to their website. Link and office hours, right? Here you go, is the same Zoom link that we have been using for office hours and lab link for, off, for lab and office hours. Link to syllabus handout, you already know that from the previous, from the previous meeting that we had in the lab. Link to my YouTube channel, where you were able to access my first video. I put my first video for the lecture. I also have my first video for the lab. 
it's in there. So I'm assuming I have I, I saw some accesses in there. So I'm assuming that everybody have been able to access it. Okay. If you haven't, let me know. Prerequisites college and high school algebra. Okay. Okay, I discussed how we are going to do the exam, right? Three exams, three partial exams and one final exam. It's going to be the first exam is going to be next Thursday. First exam, which is the 22nd. Here you go. The second on the 29th, the third on August 5th, and the next one, the last one, which is the final exam on August 12th. You have one hour and 15 minutes to do the partial exams and two hours for the final exam. There will be a 24 hours window for you to do the exams. If there are any changes, I will contact you by email. But I don't think I'm going to change. I, I like I like the schedule here of the exam. Syllabus will provide by your lab instructor. You already have it. It's 20% of overall, overall grade. Uh, let's see. Which the exam will be open from midnight to midnight. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I'll check the best schedule, maybe, you know, from 6 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. of the other day. You know, let's, let's see. I haven't decided that yet, Alyssa. But it's going to be a 24-hour period, okay? It's going to be a 24-hour period. Maybe it's better put 11.59, yeah? Just like you said, one night to 11.59, the, the next night. Let's see. Let's see how... I'm going to decide on the timing, but definitely you're going to have the daytime to do the exam. Definitely you're going to have the, the daytime to do the exam. Homework, because this is a summer session that lasts only five weeks, the pace of the class will be three times faster than any regular semester. Regular semester is 15 to 16 weeks of length. Okay, well, what we're doing here is only five weeks, so it's three times faster than the regular semester. You should expect to study two to three chapters per week. There will be about 10 to 20 problems per chapter for homework, roughly 45 homework problems per week. The deadline of each chapter homework is posted in Connect, class content, ebook you access from McGraw Hill, Connect, assignment McGraw Hill Connect as well, syllabus, study guides, notes, and anything that uh, I judge important. I'll download my Google Drive, study guides, notes, records of the lectures, recordings of the lecture, recordings of the lectures, and anything else I judge important will be downloaded, will be uploaded, will be uploaded to my Google Drive folder and my YouTube channel, in my YouTube channel, for you to access, to access. Assessment for the lecture, we are talking about the lecture here. Lab, grade, homework, partial exams and final exam. Because this is an asynchronous class, there will be no grade for attendance. So I usually give a 5% grade on attendance, but because this is an asynchronous type of class, there will be no grade for attendance. Okay, so I put 20% of the final grade for the homework, 20% for the lab, 35% for the partial exams, 25% for the final exams. And here are the letter grades for the course. Learning outcomes after successfully completing the course, okay, be able to apply critical reasoning, critical thinking, critical reasoning, it understands physical problems, sketch label, identify nones and unknowns, understand what, what do I mean by by sketching, you know, I mean the, the free body diagrams that you learn in mechanics, that you learn in physics 120. Synthesize information. That's very difficult to do, is synthesize information, okay? It's a skill that you gotta learn. You don't expect to learn it right away, but that's something that takes years and sometimes even decades 
for you to synthesize information. But keep that in the back of your mind. Use the relationships in energy heat exchange, moment and energy conservation. Explore repeatable methods of diagnosis. Design experiments to test theories. We do that in the lab. We do that in the lab. Okay? Especially the real lab. Consistently complete analysis and calculations of assigned tasks with integrity. Here you go. Learning environment, accessibility, Title IX, everything in the previous, in the previous uh, syllabus. Computer, software, hardware, hardware capability and literacy, same thing that I mentioned before, right? You have to know how to access the internet, how to use Microsoft Word, Excel, etc. Academic integrity and plagiarism, I discussed that before, conduct. And the most important here is the schedule of activities. Okay, here you go. The first topic that's there in the downloads is temperature. I'm going to download. Uh, the first topic that's there in my lecture is temperature. I'm going to upload the ideal gas part as well. You understand you have already studied something like that in chemistry, and some of it is going to be reviewed here in physics. Chapters 13 through 25. So, the, the, this course is divided in three different parts. The first part is on thermodynamics, heat and temperature. Okay. Second part is electricity and magnetism. And the last part is going to be on optics. And by the way, optics is my specialty, is my expertise. I work with optical fibers, and I know those things, you know, back and forth. Lenses, reflection, refraction, and more. Not just what is listed here, but and even more. Okay? So that's the schedule. It's going to be lots of things to cover. Okay, if you're going to become an optometrist, I had a student that, were, that was studying. In a class like that, that was said to become an optometrist, she had to pay special attention to this, to this part here of the course, seeing lenses, mirrors, and so on. Okay, so that what we have. Any questions? Let's see. Any questions? Am I missing any questions here in the chat? Uh -huh. So let me close it. And to prepare the syllabus for the lecture. And now let's go to the lab, right? Let's go to the lab. Okay, download. Handout. Here you go. First handout. First handout is just how to plot graphs. Okay? It's a duplication. It is a duplication of the first activity in physics we did we did in P120. So we are not gonna cover it again. I'm gonna start with the so we will start we will start with the second lab second lab activity download handout VR Right. Let's take a look at the name of the handout. Lab handout. Gas law. Gas law. But before we go into into the lab, let me just update my building blocks of physics. Okay. So here you go. Building block of physics. The first thing that you learn in physics 122 in the lecture, particularly, is not the amount of substance, but it is the concept of temperature. It's all in my notes for the lecture. The unit of measurement of the temperature is the Kelvin, represented by the letter capital K. 
all those concepts, length, mass, time, temperature, are independent, const independent quantities. They are independent out of one another. They are not related mathematically whatsoever with one another. Okay? Amount of a substance, electric charge, so they are all what we call our building blocks, our core ideas in physics. Think about how people came up with the idea of temperature. Think about how early cavemen came up with the idea of temperature. Or earlier Homo sapiens, maybe even before Homo sapiens, they start to have an idea of this concept of temperature. But I have done some research on that. Documented evidence of the idea of temperature did not show up until antiquity, okay, with the ancient Greeks. But most likely, earlier men already had some idea of this concept of temperature. It's a very abstract one. Think about that. It depends only on the feeling, something that you, you do not touch. Depends on what your senses report to you. Whereas length, time, and mass is far easier to grasp, right? Lengths you can start comparing with actual objects that have a given dimension. Time, we can correlate it with the motion of the stars and the motion of the sun in the sky. And mass is just a matter of a way of an effort to raise a given object. This relates to the effort to raise a given object. But now temperature, right? Temperature is a little bit more trickier. You know, the best way to, to have an idea, think about, put yourself in the skin of earlier men, earlier hominis, hominis, right? Australopithecines, uh, Neanderthals, and even the earlier Homo sapiens. How they were going to come up with an idea of temperature? In order to have a better idea of temperature, the first thing that we had to, to do is to have mastery of the fire, is to have a way to control fire. And maybe that's when the idea of a temperature first took off in the mind of men, earlier men. So keep that in mind, okay? So now we have one, two, three, four. Four important basic quantities that have been covered. And the next one that we're going to cover is going to be also amount of substance that you saw in, in chemistry. Later on, you're going to look into electric charge. So there are a total of six. There you go. I'll tell you for now, only six of them. Okay. The last one is the seventh one is luminous intensity. Okay. The unit of luminous intensity is the candle. Just the candle that you hold. But let's concentrate on those four for now. One, two, three, four. And so you don't overwhelm yourself with too many definitions. Okay, so let's, let's move forward. Make sure you download Handout VR Lab 02. Let me fix that. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh -huh. I'm, gonna well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna cover that because I already covered that before. And that was one, two, and three. Yeah. I gotta update my notes. Handout. From my Google Drive. Okay. You don't need the syllabus. Handout two is today's meeting. Handout three is going to be next meeting. Uh, maybe we do it today. Let's see how things go. 
and out to on my Google Drive. Lab report must be saved in PDF format. So let's do that together. I'm going to open my handout. This one here, gas loss. We didn't cover gas loss in the lecture yet, in my videos yet. We cover only temperature. But that's something that you should be familiar already because that's usually covered in, in chemistry. While you are, when you open this document, must, you know, make sure you save it as a, you know, in the format that you got to save, P122. Let's see how, we, how I told you to save it. Yeah, it should be 21, right? Session 21, lab 02, and your group number one digit group number, right? Everybody has a group, right? I believe maybe there is one student that doesn't have a group. Let me see, is Donica there? Are you there, Donica? I can see her here in the list. Yes, I'm yes, here. here. Okay, do you, do you already have a group? Uh, I don't think so. You don't do you have? You okay, so, so we will assign you soon. Hang in there. Okay, so make sure okay, you, thank you just just make sure what uh, everybody's doing here. You put your group number later on. Okay, Donica, everybody else already has a group. Put their group okay, number. Okay. Then the documents, save it in your hard drive. Lab 02 is gas. Save it this way. Don't, don't change anything. Don't do anything different. I like to have everything uniform in my hard drive because I'm going to download that my hard drive and keep it as a as permanent record once you submit okay so let's talk about the gas law ideal gas law there is a specific definition for ideal gas there is a specific definition and we are going to cover that in more detail in the lecture so Here is 20, here's 21. Okay, X, X is the two digit lab number. For today's lab is, is 02. Y is your own one digit group number. Upload it to your group folder. Okay, so that is a specific definition for ideal gas for an ideal gas okay. first you have to have a, a mental picture of how an ideal gas is okay any gas can be thought as being made of particles or if we, of infinitely small particles, infinitely small particles that move around back and forth in space in a container, in a, in a given space. So think about small spheres or let's say small points made of atoms, small particles made of atoms and their combination that move around back and forth in space with a given velocity. And we have this picture in the simulation that we have. Okay. 
in the velocity. Okay, so picture you know several small particles flying back and forth because they have a very small mass, a very small mass, and they are moving very fast instantaneously, instantaneously, come on, the force of gravity can be neglected. That's how the model that you have for a gas, and then we're going, we're going to go for an ideal gas, as you go, one, being made of infinitely small molecules, made of atoms and their combination. Can be sought. What else can be sought as, as particles that move around back and forth in space with a given velocity? We're building a model of what a gas looks like. Okay. particles with a very small mass that moves particles that move around that move very fast instantaneously because of that because of that the force of gravity applied to them applied to them can be neglected. So it is as though as those particles were always in a constant state of uh, free fall, floating, you know, floating with a given velocity back and forth. You give a little velocity there, they move in this way, you know, and move like, just like astronauts in the space shuttle, right? Space shuttle can, astronauts in the space shuttle can move in any direction with a given velocity up and down, back and forth in the space station with a, with a small mass that move very fast, that have a very instant, a very high instant, let's put, that have a very high instantaneous speed. Okay? Because of that, the force of gravity applied to them can be neglected. Okay. The one more condition for the ideal gas. Another condition for an ideal gas is that there is no long range force interaction between these particles okay so if you have one particle of this gas here and another one right in here there is no attraction or repulsion between them there is no long range force interaction between them there is no gravitational force there is no electrical force that's how we picture an ideal gas the only force that happens with them that is whenever they collide but then, the ideal gas, in an ideal gas, something like that doesn't happen either. Okay? There is no long-range force interaction between these particles. What do I mean, no long-range inter force interaction? I mean, no gravitational force between these particles, because their mass is very small. And no... Let's go first. Okay. One more condition. You know, the density of this molecule of these particles is very low to the point where there is no collision 
among them. That's how we define a ideal gas. That's how we define an ideal gas. So when we take to account all these conditions of the model, we find that there is a relationship between what we call the macroscopic parameters of a gas, of a volume of a gas. You're already familiar with the idea of pressure. You're already familiar with the idea of volume. And the new idea here, the new quantity, is the idea of temperature. So we know that there is this relationship between within a volume of a, of a given gas. OK? The, what you see here is the most genetic form, form of this, this law. So if you go back to your, here you go, to your handout, you're going to see that there is the Boyle's law. You're going to see that there is the Charles law, and you see that there is also the Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, all those three laws put together is the ideal gas law. Pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. Okay, just like uh, I wrote there before. PV is proportional to the temperature. Volume is proportional to the temperature, just like you have here. See this volume here is proportional to the temperature. All those three laws are already taken into account in the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is a combination of those three laws that you see here. So-called law. They're not exactly law. Okay, so if you read it here, it shouldn't be law like that. You put the quotes. Between quotes. More strictly speaking, PV, you know, here the, the, the notes say that PV is proportional to T. But we know it's more than that. Not, it's not just a proportionality constant. If you want to be more precise, the proportionality term here is going to be NR. What's N and what's R? Okay. N is the, oh, lowercase n. lowercase n in the above formula is the number of moles of moles is the amount of a given substance, right? And that's where we come with that idea, with that quantity, one of those basic quantities in physics, measured in mole, mole okay, and R, and R, is a universal constant, is a universal constant, just like, just like big G is also a universal constant. I hate that. You got better. And that was the value of R. Let's take a look at the value of R. Any book has this. Go ahead. 
Um, would we be able to use the same law for air or is it just for gas? Oh, yeah, that's the uh, air is a gas, right? Air is a gas. Okay, and I was confused. I thought it was different. Yeah, so yeah, air is a gas. So we, we do a very nice experiment, you know, and when I was teaching there uh, at Pierce, LA Pierce College in Woodland Hills, we do a very nice experiment. We entrap air in a in an ampoule, and then we go to find out whether air behaves like an ideal gas. Okay, and then when we perform the experiment, it works very well. It's a very simple experiment, you know. Just got a, just get yourself a syringe, you know. You, you know when you get yourself a syringe, take out the needle, of course, right? And then you you plug the exit of the syringe. You try to compress the air inside the syringe, become harder and harder, right? Have you ever tried to do that? Mm, yeah, I have. Okay, so mm -hmm. what's happening there? You know, the more you compress the, the, the air, which is a gas, by the way, the higher the pressure becomes. And we can perform, it's possible to perform quantitative experiments with this very simple configuration. Any syringe that you find out there, you can do that. Okay? You block the exit of the, of the syringe. And then you apply a known force to the to the syringe itself, so you can compress it little by little. You measure the volume inside the syringe. The higher the, the force that you apply to the syringe, the less volume becomes, right? And then you can verify this law of uh, ideal gas with this very simple configuration. We have we did that there at LA Pierce. Unfortunately, we don't do that here. In the physics department of uh, of CSU, mm. so yes, uh, air is you know oxygen is a gas, right? O two is a gas, nitrogen is a gas, and air is just a combination of all those two gases and a little bit of CO two. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. So let's go ahead and. This is a virtual lab to study the behavior of gases under certain limiting factors. So click here for experimental setup. You see as a set, here you go. Let's go and click this link. Sometimes those links don't work, but I think that we're lucky here. Here you go, we got it. Ideal gas, right? Let's go back here. Uh, Figure one, click on ideal gas, and you will see, so you're going to see a picture, a, a qualitative picture. Here you go, here's a container in which you're going to trap a gas. We have a thermometer here, and we have a pressure gauge. Right now, there is no gas here inside. It's just like a vacuum. Because of that, the pressure gauge is reading zero atmospheres. OK? And we can apply heat to more or less. That's what we call a heat reservoir. Let's go back to our instructions. OK, here we go. Figure two, procedure. In the first part of the experiment, you maintain a constant temperature and measure the pressure of our two different volumes. In the second part, you measure the pressure and temperature for two different volumes and verify the ideal gas law. In part three, you will determine the number of moles in gas of the gas in your apparatus from a plot of volume versus Pressure. Finally, in the last part, you examine the behavior of the gas when it's subject to adi adiabatic expansion. Let me get a different handout here. Don't forget that there are some mistakes here in this. And what you see right here is my own handout, corrected handout. Like, uh, okay, everything that's in red is a mistake. Okay, prepare the system, run this order. Add 100 light particles 
set the pressure condition constant. The temperature should stabilize at 300 Kelvin and the pressure at 11.7, okay? So we want to put 100 light particles there. Let's see. Pressure, nothing hold constant. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to put some particles in there. Let's go back. Add 100 light particles. Set the pressure condition constant. The temperature should stabilize at 300 kelvins. Okay, particles, number of particles. Okay, so you can put, uh, you can add particles in there. This is a pump, a pump that's pumping particles, that's pumping a gas inside this volume. That's the picture that you have to have of a gas. Point particles moving back and forth. They don't settle down in the container because they are because their mass is small enough and they're not subject to the force of gravity. Okay, so here we go. Let's put, uh, we're using heavy particles here. Let's use heavy particles. You don't say anything, right? They say heavy or light particles. It doesn't say, right? Oh, light particles, you said. Okay, so let's, let's substitute it by light particles. Here you go. Let's put light particles there. Here you go. 50, 100. Okay, now we have it. The temperature should stabilize at 300 kelvins and the pressure at 11.7. Let's take a look at the temperature. Yeah, the temperature is 300, see that? And we have all those particles flying around. The pressure oscillates a little bit, but it's around. Don't expect it to be exactly 11.7. Oscillates between 12.1 and 11.6. Okay, 12.1 and 11.6. Okay, what are we going to have constant? We're going to have the pressure constant. And I'm going to change the temperature. Now the pressure is held at 11.7, held constant at 11.7. Notice that none of those particles settle down sediment here at the bottom, right? They're acting just like weightless particles, particles that are in a weightless environment. Okay, the first thing that I noticed when I saw this, this drawing here was that the drawing was not written in English, it was written in Portuguese. Did you notice that this, this language here that you see is my own language, it's Portuguese. <laughs> I asked my chair if they, they require our students to know Portuguese. A hundred particles, okay. Check the width option with the mouse, move the wall of the smallest the smallest possible position. This is the position to simulate one state of the system. So you can figure three. Yeah, we can adjust the no not here. Here you go. Here you go. We can change the volume of this container okay just by using this handle don't touch that one that other one we can increase the volume we can decrease the volume okay play a little bit with it you're gonna have we're having light particles go back With the mouse, what is the width? Okay, he got the width option. Okay. 
So that's five nanometers, a very small container, what you have here, five nanometers only. And you get a larger container. It's actually what we have is a volume, right? But because we're in the two-dimensional space here, we are not seeing the other, the other dimension here. We have the height, we have the width, and then we must have a depth as well of this container. So let's keep it at five nanometers. Notice what happens to the temperature when I expand the gas, right? And I when contract the gas, okay? If you're to keep the pressure constant under a variable volume, the temperature would adjust accordingly. So let's say position, Note the measurement of the waste indicating the pressure on the table. Note that the measurement of the system is not necessarily the volume, but the variation of this quantity causes the volume to vary in the same proportion. Okay, calculate the product between the pressure and volume for this measurement. Very box length. Let's see, the box length Okay, vary the box length and note the new temperature value does simulating a different state Note and calculate the ratio between volume and temperature for this new state, okay? Varying temperature, so here you go Here we can say that there is a mistake, right? It's not uh, cubic nanometers, right? It's just one of the dimensions that vary. So, but uh, go ahead, you know, make a table. Let's go ahead. Uh, assume that it's not five nanometers, but assume that we are changing the volume to five na cubic nanometers. That's another mistake. You've got to be aware of. Let's go here. You're going to that. Let's see, 127. Let me take attendance right now. And let's see. Okay, Donica, do you want to choose? Uh, let me see. I I have one, two, three. I have four groups. One of the groups have five students. Okay. Every, every other group has four students, so do, do you want to pick up any of those those three groups? I would like you to choose, so to make things easier for you. Okay, do you know any of the students in this group? You might want to pick up a group one, two, or three. Okay, I don't want you to go to group four, because group four already have five students there. Do you know anybody here in any of those um, groups? I know a couple people in group three. Group, group three? Okay. So go ahead, you know, interface with them. And okay, thank I'm you. gonna put you in group number three. Okay, and let's get, let's get here, data, sort, group number. Good, so Bella, you're there, right, Bella? Okay, next, Annabella. Here. Good. Sarah? Here. Next is Carly. Here. Next is Mahedi. Here. Wesley Motley. I don't see Wesley. Oh, Wesley is here in the list. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ida? I got Ada, right? Ada. Ada, right? Here. Okay. Ada. Jordan? Here. Donica is here. Shagar, Norali? Here. Next, Daniela? Here. Dior? Here. Next, Shreya? Here. Peter? Here. Ana Ponce? Here. Kaylee? Yeah. 
Alisa? Here. Jasmine? Here. Okay, we have 18 students. We're in good shape. Okay, 1.30 right now. Let's have our break. Okay, so lab notes. So break 1.30 to 1.45 p.m. I will see, okay. I'll see you in 15 minutes.
over here. Let's go to our spreadsheet. I'm going to add a new blank spreadsheet here. Here you go. That's gas law. And I'm going to start to share my screen. Okay, here you go. We're going to make a table. Then the spreadsheet. A table like that. Like I said, I don't like it that they are calling no cubic nanometers here, whereas they're call calling 10 nanometers and 5 nanometers. But let's assume that this is not 5 cubic nanometers, right? It's not 5 nanometers, but 5 cubic nanometers. Not 10 nanometers, but 10 cubic nanometers. So here we go. We have one, two, three rows, one, two, three, four columns. Let's go here. Volume. Volume, pressure, and temperature. Volume pressure and temperature okay I'm gonna I want you to put the units there it's doing kilopascal right so let's put kilopascal here that's initial final The initial is what? The initial is 10. The final is 5. So let's go to our, our simulation here. Here you go. 5, 150. The pressure is 11. Let's see if we can put in a different, yeah, let's put in kilopascal instead. So you can put it in the atmosphere or, or Pascal. Let's go. Let's shrink this guy. So we can have both of them sharing the same screen. Temperature 150 Kelvin. The Pascal is 1183. Remember we are keeping this experiment at constant pressure, right? I set the pressure constant. You can hold constant the volume, you can hold constant the temperature, you can hold constant the pressure while change the volume, and you can hold constant the pressure while, while change the temperature. Here we go, let's go ahead and 10 nanometers now. Go. And then the temperature increases to 301. The pressure remains at 1183 kilopascal. Professor, isn't it yeah. supposed to be the opposite? What do you mean? The opposite? So it says 10 nanometers is on top. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, let's switch. 301 here and 150 here. Thank you. He put the 10 nanometers first, right? I would expect him to put the 5 before the, the 10. Here you go. So, make this table look nice. Blow it up. Like that. Like that. Oops. You go now we did it I gotta put the cube here right click format cell superscript you go like that and now let's see if uh, 
ideal gas law can be verified from this data. So you go corrected. You go. Uh -huh. Where the box length? We did that. Okay. What's the calculated value of VI PI over TI? Okay. So let's do that. What is the percentage difference between the initial and final value? Okay, let's let's calculate the VP uh, P V over T, right? And then you put the units in there. I'm gonna make a new. Column and you write down the formula P V over T. Let's see if they match. Here you go. Yeah, they're very close to one another, just a small difference. Don't forget to put the unit here. Do like that in your in your lab report. Go. Like that. And now let's calculate the percentage difference between one and the other. What's the percentage difference between the initial and final? Percentage difference should not, should not be rounded to one significant figure. Okay, so we're going to do that percentage difference right in here. Percentage difference is going to be in the units of percent. How do we get it? We're going to get absolute value of this one minus this one multiply it by 100 and then you're, what you're going to do, you do not know which one is the real value. You do not know if this one is the real value, you do not know if this one is the real value. So what do you, what, what do I going to compare that with respect to? You're going to compare with the average value of those two. Okay, average. That's how you take. And the percentage difference is very small, it's only 0.33%. So we are assuming that what we are doing here is an actual experiment, and that's how you, you do it. You do it in the experiment. You may have different values, okay? If you have different values, use the, the different values that you have. But the, the, the difference shouldn't be much larger than what I have here. Let's go here to okay. Note record note record state one and two from the table both in the table below. Okay, now what we're going to do here? We're going to do we're going to repeat what we did, but for six different values. Okay six different values. So it's going to be the same table, but now with six different values. I'm going to, I'm going to extend, instead of calling initial final, I'm going to call it state one, state two. Okay, here you go. State one. Let's make sure you're doing it. Uh, and then he's going to add a number of He's gonna put the Pascal before. You know what? We, got, we have to do that from from scratch. It's scratch here. Uh, repeat this procedure to simulate the six states suggested and recorded in the table below. Pick the other four states on your own by varying the volume. Note it should be mentioned that should be mentioned that the volume unit is assume that all dimensions of cash yeah, would also be measured in unit. Okay, all the dimensions. You know what does it mean? Now it means that the area, the cross-sectional area of that volume is going to be one nanometer squared. That's what he means by cash value. Okay? So
So, you know, if you're if you're having ten nanometers wide, a ten nanometer wide container, and the volume is ten nan cubic nanometers, what does it mean? It means that the area of this container, you know, this length times the thickness of the container, is going to be one nanometer square. And we are not changing this cross-sectional area. We are changing only the width of the container. Okay? That's what he means by cash value. So let's go ahead and do another table. Okay, not this one. I want this one here. I'm going to undo what I did before. Here you go. We're going to do a brand new table. And we're going to do a state here. State one, two, three, four, five, six. Number of particles, pressure, volume, right? Temperature. Number of particles, pressure, volume. Next one should be what? Temperature. Temperature and volume over temperature. Temperature and volume over temperature. Make sure you put all your units in there. You know, for this one, the unit of the number of particles, you put as a number one. It's a unitless unit. Here you put whatever the pressure you're measuring, right? The volume, whatever the unit of volume it is. Make your table look nice. Here you go. What I like to do is to bold face those guys and also bold face this one. How many particles are we going to have? We're going to have 100 for all of them. Okay, here we go, 100. You already have measurements for state number one and two. Oh, state number one and two is 10 in five. The volume, I'm sorry, here is 10 in five. The pressure is 1183. Remember the pressure is being kept constant. The temperature is 301, 150. And then you can go ahead and do the mass volume divided by temperature. There you go. And repeat for the rest. And you pick up whatever volume you want. You pick up whatever volume. And how do you pick up the, the volumes? Okay, for, first, you know, first you have to know what's the minimum possible volume. Five cubic nanometers. And you, you, you find out what's the maximum possible volume. Fifteen cubic nanometers. So when you are between five and fifteen, you have to have a total of ten. Of ten or of six. 5, 10, 15, we have only 3. So let's pick up 5, 7 and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15. Now we have only 5. So you got to fit one more in there. Okay? That's how we do. 5, let's see, 7 and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15. You know, let's do 5, 7, 10, uh, let's see here, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, let's do one by one. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? So instead of going all the way up to 15, we go from 5 to 10. 5, we already have this measurement. We're going to do 6 nanometers, which correspond to 6 cubic nanometers. I'm getting the pressure doesn't change because everything is being done at constant pressure. The temperature changes to 180. That's 6, 180. The pressure is 183. The next one is going to be 7, oh, 8, 
in nine. Let's see, the pressure won't change. What's the temperature is going to be? Seven nanometers. Next. 211. I'm getting 211 here. Next. Eight. 240. And nine. Okay. Two sixty nine. Here you go. No, see that this ratio remains almost constant, right? Because the pressure is constant. Because the pressure is constant, we are not in, in and we are not increasing the number of, of uh, particles in there. The R is always constant, universal constant. Let's see what else he asks. Use Excel to graph the pressure and volume values obtained from the simulation on the table. Okay, that, that should be obvious, right? It's going to be a constant pressure, variable, variable volume. And then you do for volume and temperature. Here you go, part one. And then, let's see, he's going to ask for something else. Make a graphing diagram below showing. Yeah. So pressure on the vertical, volume in the horizontal. Volume in the vertical. Temperature in the horizontal. Okay, so here you go. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. Yeah, see, he made a mistake here. He put he asks us to put the pressure here. Okay, now we're gonna switch. We have to switch. Let's see here. Volume goes in in the horizontal. Yeah, the pressure. You're better off putting the pressure here. Okay, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. He wants to put the temperature, the volume in the vertical. Yeah, so these two are in good shape. Okay, so just switch, you know, the position of your pressure. Put it to the right of the volume. There's a reason for that. So here you go. Okay. What you had initially or something like that, that's how the, the handout asked you to do. You know, move the pressure column to the right of the volume. And now we can plot the pressure in the vertical and the volume in the horizontal. Okay, the pressure is constant. The volume is increasing. So it doesn't tell, tell us much. What's going to tell you? What's going to tell you? Something about... The ideal gas law is this. Let me see if you want if that is exactly what he wants. Volume value. Oh, okay, he wants the volume in the vertical. Oh my goodness. Ah. Okay, so he wants the volume in the vertical. So you're better off to put the volume here. Okay, now we have it the way you want. No, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now that we are going to do the second graph. Insert. Okay. Here you go. That's your second graph. I don't like... Ch you have to have that in your... 
in your graph. Make sure you do not have this big empty space here. You can optimize this space. Let's see. I can make it the vertical going from 4. Let's see how it looks from 4 to 12. Okay. Can I do better than that? I don't think... Uh, not in the vertical, but here definitely in the horizontal we can do better than that. Professor? Yeah. Um, can, you can you just demonstrate just real quick how to switch the position of the columns, please? Sure. Let's go there. Uh, I'm going to, you know, cancel the graphs here, right? Here you go. Undo, 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 everything. Here you go. Undo from there. So I can redo it all over again. Set. That's how we had originally, right? That's how you had originally. Yes. Okay. First, plot the graph. Uh, first, let me see. No, yeah, don't plot the graph yet. You want to have your pressure to the right of the volume. Okay, because you want the pressure in the vertical and the volume in the horizontal. If you plot something like that, you know, without changing anything, why, why we do not want this format? Because if you plot something like that, look what you're going to get. Excel automatically presumes that the volume is going to go in the vertical. But that's not what the handout is asking. The handout is asking the volume in the vertical. So what are you going to do? You are going to, you are going to cut this column for the pressure, OK? Cut it. Control X. Click this column here to the right of the volume, and then you're going to paste it. Oh, gosh. I don't like it. Why did it do that? Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, here you go. I cut it. Gotta, gotta, gotta go here. Click it here. Right click. See? And insert cut cells. That's what you have to do. Insert cut cells. When you insert cut cells, it inserted your pressure automatically. And now you can have your pressure in the vertical and the volume in the horizontal when you plot the graph. Do you get it? So you got to cut it. First you cut it. And then you insert. I don't have inserted here now. Insert cut cell to the right of the volume. And it's going to insert the cell. Move everything that's to the right to the left. Uh, everything that here in this region to the right of the table. Okay? That's the first graph. Let's plot the first graph. You go, insert, chart, you know, and that simple graph. And we are going to optimize this plot for 4 to 11. We go from 4 to 11. You know, that's, that's, that's a, you can also optimize here. You know, let's see, 1,000 to 1,400. 1,000 to 1,400. Okay. Uh, no, what's going on here? Huh, interesting. He didn't do the way I want him to do. Okay. 1,000. Okay, let's try, try again. 1,000. I hope he keeps 1,400. Ah, he doesn't. He changed automatically to 1,200. Interesting. But, uh, you know, I'm doing that because I want the graph all, almost in the middle. But this, this first graph is simple because the pressure is always constant, right? Now let's do the second one that's more important. The second one, we want the volume on the vertical and the temperature on the horizontal. To get the volume on the vertical, the temperature in the horizontal, the temperature must be to the left of the volume. Okay, so I'm going to cut this column and insert it to the left of the volume. Insert cut cell. Okay, and here you go. And now we can plot the graph the way we want. Volume in the vertical, temperature in the horizontal. Okay, and go insert it. Here you go, we get this straight line. 
There are more things that you have to do. I'm going to, I don't like the chart title. There are more things that we have to do, right, for those graphs. Don't forget, we got to, I didn't do that yet, but we have to add labels to the vertical and horizontal values. Here you go, let's start with this one first, the first graph. Important piece of information. Chart design, add chart element, axis title, primary horizontal, axis title, primary vertical. You know, you type it here. That's going to be volume, cubic nanometers. If you were my P120 lab, right? Like we did all of that. Font, superscript, here you go. Pressure, don't forget to put the unit as well. I'll leave for you to do that. I'm going to look for that. I'm going to look for optimization of the space. Uh, here, this space can be further optimized. In this case, you know, notice that we do not have this line here on the end. Why is that? There's a reason. The reason has to do, to do with the options of the axis. Your, the space is every two nanome cubic nanometers, right? Put one cubic nanometer, and now the graph looks better. That was the first graph. And we're going to do the same thing for the second graph. Optimize the space. We start at 100. Okay, we got to optimize the vertical as well. 0 to 12. I'm going to do, do, to do from 4 to 11. I'm going to do from 4 to 11. Here you go. He did that automatically for me. That's good. Can I do a little bit more here? Maybe 125 to 325. Let's do that. Yeah. 125 to 325. Optimizing the space. Yeah. Looks like a straight line, right? We got to put... We got to put the labels as well. Axis title, primary, horizontal, primary, vertical. That's going to be temperature. Put between parentheses the temperature value. And then, let's see if I can copy this guy so I don't have to type everything from scratch. Yeah, I got it. But the font ended up huge, right? Let's see. Well, I'll just adjust the size of the font. Which size is this one is? 10. Let's put this one 10 as well. And you go. Bold face it. So we have our two graphs. Let me see if I'm missing any messages from you. No message from you yet. Everybody's following. Two graphs. First part is done. 2.15. I have half an hour before I go for a second break. We'll be here for another two hours. What else can we do here? Let's see. Let's see what he's going to ask first. Uh, make graphs of the diagram below using the coll collected data. Okay. Procedure C. Did we do procedure B already? Procedure A. <laughs> he skipped. <laughs> procedure B. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see what's going on. Maybe I delete that procedure B. Procedure A. Procedure, yeah, he skipped procedure B, right? Huh. Yeah, another mistake, right? Another mistake here, so. What else we, we can do here in this graph? You are going to put the. Hey, 
the Gresh request there. Okay, add trend line is a linear fit. Display equation chart. Don't use set intercept. And display the R square. Here we have a slope. Okay, what we have here is the volume, right? What we have here is the temperature. That's what this equation is all about. Volume under constant pressure changes linearly with temperature. Is that what the equation tells us? It doesn't tell you to do that in the handout, but I want you to do it, okay? I want you to do it. Here you go. I want to analyze the data a bit. Let's see if he does here. Uh, yeah, he doesn't do that. Okay. So he go 10. I like the data obtained from the simulation. Okay, the mathematical relationship can be observed. Okay, it's a linear. On this graph, what can you say about pressure and volume? Okay, pressure is constant, is volume. Uh, what kind of mathematics? Volume and temperature. Okay. Yes. Yeah, gotta plot, make a graph diagram below. Uh, yeah, volume takes on the vertical. Okay. But you also gotta do something else too. Here you go. He didn't write it down. Fit a linear curve to this graph. Okay. Just like I did. And check if the slope, check the value of the slope, and write down, and write down, write down the value of the slope with its unit, with its unit, okay? So here you go, slope, The slope equal to, right? Don't forget the unit. The slope you get from the graph itself is the unit of the vertical divided by the unit of the horizontal. And from this graph, we may determine what the universal gas law constant is. Does it uh, make sense with respect to the, to the ideal gas law? Let's see if it makes sense. I'm going to go back here to my lab notes, right? I'm going to get here the ideal gas law. Here you go. PVNRT, right? P on the vertical, V on the horizontal, constant temperature. Uh, constant pressure. Here you go. It's like that. Right? V on the vertical, what does it mean? V on the vertical means that we sh we're supposed to get an equation like that. Okay? Pressure is constant, R is constant, N is constant. So you're supposed to get a straight line with a slope given by this ratio that you see right in here. V in the vertical, P in the horizontal. So, so now let's do constant temperature. Let's keep uh, 
We're going to do another simulation, right? Going back to our, to our we go, proceed to determine the amount of gas. As before, inject the particles into the chamber, hold the temperature constant, and note the pressure as you increase the volume. And then, one, two, three, four, five, five data points is asking a new table now. We have 100 particles in the chamber. Now we're going to hold the temperature constant. Temperature is going to be held constant. We already have 100 particles in there. You don't have to do anything else, right? And now we're going to increase the volume. Let's start at 5. And he's asking for 5 data points only. 5, 10. 5, 10, 15, okay, 5, 7 and a half, 10, 12 and a half, 15, okay, we can do this way now. Another table, volume, pressure, and the inverse of the pressure. Well, I'm going to take advantage of, let's see, I'm going to just copy this guy and paste it here make things easier for me but now we're going to have only five states delete shift cell up right I'm gonna keep n constant let's go back to our volume pressure on divide by pressure okay we do not we're keeping temperature constant. I, I'm going to keep the temperature here, you know. Volume. I'm going to do, yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to miss some. And then we got to put 1 divided by pressure. Don't forget to put, okay. 1 divided by pressure. 1 divided by pressure should be this guy here. 1 divided by the other. But of course, the pressure is going to change. Do this table instead. Okay? Put those additional columns in there. Total of five states. The temperature doesn't change. Does it tell you which temperature you should be used? You gotta, gotta look at the temperature values. That is not. Hold it. He doesn't say which temperature to hold constant. So you can choose whatever temperature you want. You know, choose this temperature, choose 69 at 5 nanometers. The volume that we are going to use is going to be 5, 7 and a half, 10. I'm choosing those values. You can choose different values, up to you. We still do not know what the pressure is. Let me clear that for now. Clear contents. The number of particles doesn't change, right? So now we can perform the experiment. Five nanometers. Pressure is, and you you got you gotta monitor that. Get the lowest value, get the upper value, and then take the average. Okay? Take a glance what the lower value is. Two eighty five. 2085, 2077, looks like 2077, yeah, 2077, now let's get the highest possible value, 2165, write it down, 2077, the vari we are having a variation, but the variation is not a lot, okay, we do get something like that in the real world. 2139. Okay, can we slow this guy down? No, we cannot slow it down. 2157. 2157. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. 2157. We're getting almost, we're getting 80 units in 2000 variation. We're getting only 5% variation. Take the average of this value 
4,228, you get 2,114, okay? So we're going to use a pressure 2,114 for this specific value, 2,114, and by the way, it is kilopascal. 5 nanometers, the temperature is 269, there you go. Let's go for the next, seven and a half. Seven and a half, here you go. Here you go. Monitor what the volume is, what the volume, what the pressure is. 14, 1, 13, 19, 9, 13, 77. Exchange very quickly, right? 1377 was the highest value. 1431, 1442, 1446. The highest. 1452, I'm getting the highest. 1454. Okay, 1454. We're getting a variation. 80 out of 1300. Oh, that's. It's kind of 8%, 6%, okay? 1377, 11, 2831 is the sum. So the average should be 1415, 1415. What is the temperature? 269? Yeah, yeah, it's 269 because the temperature is kept constant, right? 269, everything. Let's go for a different volume. Next volume is 10 nanometers, 10 cubic nanometers. Monitor the pressure value, get the lowest value and the highest value, and take the average of them. 1040. 1048 is the lowest one, apparently. Mm, did I see 1020 something there? Yeah, I see 1020. 1020. Now let's see what's the highest value. Ah, 1016 is the lowest value. You're not going to spend too much time, okay? Well, you spend maybe at most three minutes monitoring this thing. The highest value should be 1100 something, 1102. Eleven oh one, yeah. Looks like the highest one is eleven oh two oh two. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll put eleven oh two. Which give me an average one thousand. 59, 1059, next, 12 and a half, here you go, pressure decreased, monitor the lowest possible value, and then go for the highest possible value. 817, 811, 806, 806, yeah, 801, yeah, it looks like the lowest one is 801, let's look for the highest, 866 is the highest one, 873, 
885, I saw 885 there. 885, 887. Did you see 890? I saw 890. Yeah, I saw 890. So, so there's a variation of 90 units, 800 units, 1691. We are talking about 845. Take the average, 845. Everything, everybody doing there well? Let me let me go through you folks one by one. So, Bella, are you in good shape there, Bella? Yes. Okay, do you get all your data? Yeah. Okay, no problems there, tables? No, no problems. Okay, let's ask for Jordan. Jordan, how are you doing there, Jordan? Good. Good. Okay. Did you plot your graph, Jordan? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Say so one more student. Here you go. Kaylee. Are you in good shape there, Kaylee? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the last data point, right? Let's go for the last data point now. Gas law. 15 nanometers. Cubic nanometers. Here you go. 269. Monitor the pressure here. I see 662 the lowest. Doesn't go below 662, right? Yeah, doesn't look like it goes below 662. Now let's see which one is the highest one. 717, 725, 729. That's 729, 736. I saw 746. 750. 755. Yeah, let's see, 755. 7, 11, 14, 17 divided by 2. That's 700. And eight. 708, that's the average that I'm getting. Okay, here's my graph. Here's my graph, here's my table. Now I gotta plot my graph. 235, 10 more minutes, we have our break. Let's see what he's going to ask us to plot. Um, but actually 100 particles, do this for five values. What's the slope of the plot? V, ver okay, you want to plot V in the vertical and IP over IP, one over P in the horizontal. Okay, and again, yeah, again, because the V goes in the vertical, the V should be to the right of the one over P, okay? So we're gonna do the same here. Here you go, V should go in the vertical. So you're going to get this guy here, cut it, and insert right here to the right of 1 over P. Make my graph looks nice. You go. My table look nice. Here you go. You want to plot like that. Why is that? Well, that's because you're going to get a linear relation for that. Here you go. Just going back to our to our gas, the ideal gas, right? Here you go. V is linear with the inverse of P. See the P right in here? I'm going to write that in a different way. Here you go. Oh, yeah, I already did that here. I'm going to but I'm going to do it differently here, you go. like that. Here is my slope. Here is my variable. V is linear with the inverse of P. Okay? Just like you have here in a different way. 
So you should, you're supposed to get a linear, a re linear graph when we plot that insert. Here you go, linear. Yeah, we did get. I don't remember. I don't like title, titles to the graph. Can we? Yeah, it looks like we can optimize the space, right? I'm going to put zero zero here go on the horizontal. I'm gonna get at 0 0.0015. And here I'm going to start at 0 0.0004. Uh oh. Why did he do that? Hmm. 0 0.0004. Here you go. Okay, good. Still linear. We're going to go from 4 to 16. 4 to 16. Here. You go. And let's see, can you do better than that? I don't like that. Let's see, 4 to 15. Uh, we have 11. Oh, difference. No, I don't like that. Yeah, it looks like we gotta do to four here in the horizontal. It looks like we're better off to go to 16 instead of 15. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's better because we can have evenly spaced. Don't forget to do everything else that we did before. Add a chart elements, primary horizontal, primary vertical, right? Primary horizontal is going to be 1 over P. Don't forget to put the units there. I want to see that in your lab report. And in the horizontal is going to be the volume. Okay. Oh, don't forget to put the trend line as well. Display equation chart, display R square. See the slope? We have a slope. 239. Let's see what else he asked us to do. How many moles of gas was present in the chamber? Professor? Yeah. Um, so um, for so this table up top, top right, right here, here. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to just insert the one that we made on Excel, or do you want us to keep the one that's in there? Let's see. Yeah, yeah the one that you made on Excel. That's right. Copy and paste. Okay. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter where, like, the V and the... Well, yes. And stuff yes. Is. In Excel matters, you know, because when you plot the graph, okay. yeah, you, you go ahead and, you know, copy that and paste there in the... Okay. In the, you know, it can be an image, you know. Okay, thank you. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to be entering the same thing twice, right? So now he's asking, what's how many moles we have in the in the gas? How many moles of gas was present in the chamber? Well, you're gonna get how do you do that? You know, how many moles? Let's go back to my notes. Let's see, let's see if you can get that. Oh, here you go. NRT equal to slope. The number of moles is the slope divided by RT. Right? Okay, so here you go. If I go to my software. This one right in here. Go, 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 go. Here you go. Lab gas law. Okay, it's slope equal to what? NRT. N. R T. 
and we want to know what's the value of n. Okay, the slope, we know what the slope is from the graph that we got, 10,613. Don't forget the units, 10,614. What's the unit for that slope? The unit for that slope is the unit of volume divided by the unit of the inverse of the pressure. Okay, so here you go. The unit of cubic nanometer divided by the inverse of the pressure, which is kilopascal. Kilopascal, like that. Kilopascal is a thousand, right? A thousand pascal. Here you go. That's the unit of my slope. What is the temperature? The temperature was kept constant. And I put that in my table, right? 269 Kelvin. 269 Kelvin. And my R, what's the value of my R? Just given there. If I can find it, I'm going to look at the other one. This one here. Nope, not this one. Notes, this one here. Huh. R, 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 R. I didn't memorize that. Here you go. 8314 mole per, kilo, per Kelvin. 8.314 mole per Kelvin. 8.314 is that joules divided by mole per Kelvin. Let's see how many moles we have of gas there. In this simulation, it's low. Substitute the slope, yeah, Pascal, now user defined, what's J, J is choose, user defined, more, okay, good, very good shape, now we got to put everything else there, temperature, okay, and we got to put the R, here you go, Pascal, there is a relationship between Pascal and Jules, Okay. Pascal is what? Pascal is Newton per square of Newton per square meter. And what is joules? Joules is Newton times meter. Right? The unit of joules. So let's go ahead and substitute that here. Joules, and here you go. Now what we are getting? We are getting cubic meter and we are getting cubic nanometer. Okay? We want to know what's the value in moles. So we have to change nanometers to meters. Let's do that. Here you go. Nanometer is 10 to minus 9 meters. Oh. Ten to minus nine meters. You place it here. You go. See, ten to minus nine right in here. Now the meter cube is gonna cancel out with the meter cube, and it looks like we're gonna get a very small molarity here. When you raise 10 to minus 9 to 3, it's going to get 10 to minus 27. Okay? So here you go. Let's expand. Calculate. Yep. That's how many moles I'm getting. Hopefully, I didn't do any mistakes. 245, we're gonna have a break very soon. 
that's what I'm getting for the molarity. Okay, if you find a mistake, let me know. Okay, folks, I'm doing that on the on the fly. When we do things on the fly, we usually make mistakes along the way. Even though I have done this experiment several times, every now and then a mistake, a mistake you know, comes about. That this one, this one here, go back. Objectives. No, that's not what I want. I want this one here, right? We did that. Going for ideal gas law. How does changing the species of gas particle from have to like change the results of this exercise? Okay, place the similar. Okay, you here this this part here you do that uh, on your own. Okay. You know what? Let me see here. Yeah, just answering. Just answer how does changing the speech of the gas part from heavy from light to heavy, right? From light to heavy. Change the result of the exercise. Yeah, do that at home and then you you answer. Place the seam a little bit, make the lid pop off. How do you do that? How do you manage to pop off the lid? I'm gonna show you one way to pop off the lid. Okay? I'm going to compress this gas. So the pressure increases, okay? The way to pop off the lid of this gas is to increase the pressure. This container may have a limit of how much pressure it can handle. In real life, something like that happens, okay? Uh, containers out there, they don't hold pressure forever. So one way to increase the pressure is by popping a pumping more and more particles in the container. Here you go, I'm increasing the pressure, see that? More particles, more particles. Eventually the pressure is gonna get so high that container is not gonna be able to contain all this gas. Okay? Let's see if I can pop it off. Pop up. More, more. That's the smallest volume that I can go, right? The smaller the volume, the higher the pressure. Let's see. Oh, temperature cannot be held. Oh, yeah, I pop it. Pop it out, see that? It blew up. Be careful. If you do that in real life, be careful. It can blow up in your face. Something like that can blow up in your face, and then you're losing all the gas. Okay, I went as high as I could. Hit turn lead, right? Keep on increasing the particle again. Here you go. You're going to pop. Pop again, right? Pop up again. Here you go. The pr pressure keep increasing. Uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, because it's nothing. So let's see. We are going to keep the temperature constant. Here you go. Ah, but the temperature now is too low. Now the temperature is too low. I, uh, I don't think I'll be able to pop it. Let's see here. It's going to take forever. You know, it's going to take forever because the temperature is too low right now. Yeah, and then you have a limit of how many particles you can get there. Okay? That's one way. Any questions? Let's see here. How do you do it? Uh, try to figure out a different way of to pop, pop off the lid of the container. Okay? So, we're done. We're done in this, with this experiment. So it's 250 right now. Let's see. We have to, we got a, we have one hour and a half more. Let me see if you can do the next one. The next one should be Coulomb's law. Okay. Coulomb's law is kind of easy. That's good. Okay. So let's see. This lab notes. Okay, lab report is due one week from now. One week from now. From now. This lab report, okay? Let's, let's have a break and let me see what we are going to do. 
I'll let you know. We either continue into the next lab or I'll let you go earlier, okay? I will, I will decide in the next few minutes what to do. Any questions about that? This material, you know, is going to be covered quickly in my lecture recording. But you can use this lecture recording as well to help you out with these ideas here of ideal gas. Okay, I see you in 15 minutes to, let's see, 2.55. Yeah, I'll see you in 3.10. Let's do that. Break to 3.10. Let's do a little bit longer than 15 minutes. I see you soon. So, if you don't have any questions, we can finish it now and we meet again for the next lab next week. Don't forget, to the lab report of today activity is due Wednesday next week. Okay, thank you too. You too have a great week weekend, right?